Okay. That was pretty easy. <laughs> Not that I was expecting to be difficult. <laughs> Refreshments. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'll take a beer. I'll take a beer after that very, very difficult and challenging fight. <laughs> back everybody to x4 foundations i'm an old guy gaming and uh, i am back from my business trip to vegas and uh, do not expect to have any more week-long business trips uh, until october so hopefully we can get back into uh you know a normal schedule moving forward here uh so yeah i'm back in x4 and we are currently in the asteroid belt we are working our way towards the gate that's going to lead us into the middle systems of uh, the Terran so we can open them up for trading purposes and then um, had lots of good comments from you guys uh, while I was away and I, I have since learned that if I go back and continue the boron uh, the main boron quest line um, which one is it I just got to figure out where that mission is. Oh, here it is, right here. I was just looking in the wrong place. I think it's this one called the High Road. Approach Highway. Yeah, see, this actually says they're going to they're constructing a highway. Okay, good. All right, so after we um, unlock these Terran systems, then we will gear up to, to keep going on that quest there. Uh, yeah, so it's good to be back and uh, looking forward to getting back into X4 and continuing our playthrough here. The last time I approached this gate, you know, when I didn't have the rep, uh, you know, they would send a bunch of warnings and say, turn around or we're going to shoot you, you know, kind of thing. But now, now we can get through it. So that's good because it'll open up those additional systems for us. I also had some comments from you guys about, uh, you know, and I suggesting maybe doing uh, the Hatikva Free League questline because I guess that's opens up other storylines in the game, and it's something that I, the game it kind of or the devs it kind of intend for you to do early on. But you see that I've always approached this game in the past, anyways, when I played X2 and X3. I've always approached this game as more of an open world sandbox, which of course it is, and just kind of done my own thing. And the storylines, I've I've done some of them, but I've never that's never been the main reason why I play this game. Now that does entering that, Mars. Now that that's not to say we won't do storylines because we will, and we already have, of course. But um, I don't know. I, I kind of have my own. Plants, I guess is what I'm saying for this playthrough and it's all kind of my own role-playing idea uh, It overall it involves at least for this particular playthrough it involves Eventually if not outright destroying at least uh, definitely there's Mars look at that uh, Definitely pushing back uh, the xenon threat um, And to a you know a lesser extent the cock threat too so that's still my overriding goal for this particular series, but that's not to say, like I said, we won't, you know, that we won't be doing uh, some of the storyline as we go along either. Okay, so it's a cool looking station here. Uh, some of you have also in the in the comments suggested uh, mods. Uh, definitely do that. I appreciate it um, and I, I there's a, a high probability that I will do another playthrough of this game in the future uh, modded but for this particular playthrough because it is my first time going through X4 I kind of wanted to you know get the authentic vanilla experience if you will so we won't be it's not my intention you know to be installing any mods for this particular playthrough we're gonna do a pure vanilla playthrough and that helps me really you know get a good feel for how the vanilla game works and then we'll in turn 
um, help me decide what mods I would like to use to, you know, um, enhance the game and so forth. Stop your attack immediately. Sorry. You will now suffer the consequences. What? This is sector security. Comms channel open. Reporting an attack against this station. Oh, come on, you guys. You gotta, you gotta be Criminal not... Criminal record has been updated. <laughs> you gotta not be so anal about that. It's gonna accidentally have misfires once in a while. I wonder if it has to do with the damage that this mass... No, not mass driver. Whatever this gun is that I have that's just amazing. Well, it, it does serious damage. The downside to it is that it's very difficult to hit fast ships. It's not really designed to be a fighter, anti-fighter weapon. But if you can get a hit off on them, it does major damage. Uh, what am I looking for? I'm looking for my ship information. I just always forget what this weapon's called here. Blast mortar. Yeah, the blast mortar. Okay, so I think that that's just a temporary rep hit. I don't think it's going to overall hurt our... You're not much of a pilot, are you? Uh, reputation with... The Terrans. Are these guys coming after me? What are you doing? Yeah, I'm not going to engage them because if I do, that could actually hurt our rep. But we're still... Yeah, we're still fine with the Terran. That, that's just a temporary thing. Anyway, um... So, let's see. What were we talking about? We were talking about... Yeah, kind of the, the overall intent for this playthrough. And, um, you know, it's going to it's gonna follow, you know, my role-playing-ish ideas, sandbox, uh, becoming a, a major, you know, power in the, the X universe and pushing back uh, the Xenon threat so we can have trade kind of idea. Um, but I'm not always going to play that way in future playthroughs, though. So, um, you know, we might do a pirate and be a criminal in, a, in another playthrough. We might do a modded playthrough. You know, that sort of thing. We might do a playthrough where we really do focus heavily on the storylines, that sort of thing. Okay, so, anyway, enough jibber-jabber here. In trouble now. We are looking for... Hey, can we fly through their ring? <laughs> Look at that. We just flew through their ring. I've always wanted to do that. Now I can cross it off my bucket list. Not really. Okay, so let's take a look and see what's going on here. I guess the first thing we should do is a long range. As I've mentioned a few... Those guys are coming after me, aren't they? Uh, as I've mentioned a few times, um, the thing I like the most about the Terran systems is that... Hey, we better get out of here. This guy's going to shoot at us. They're very safe. You know, I, I've seen... The only place I've seen any enemies at all is in the asteroid belt. Um, and I'm assuming at least it'll continue to be that way for for the time being. Unless story... You know, stories... You call yourself a pilot? Unless stories change things, you know. Okay, so we have stations there, stations there. Uh, we have not... Oh, oh, well, there's a an unknown object there, so... Let's, uh, I'm assuming that's going to be maybe a, oh, that doesn't look like a gate. What is that? Oh, it's just a satellite. Okay. Gotcha. Oh, there's a gate right there. Wait, is that a gate? It looks like a broken gate. Not an inactive, but an actual destroyed gate. That's exactly what it is. Oh, it's like the Terran version of the gate, too. Look at that. Cool. This is my first time in these, these systems. That wasn't already obvious. Jump gate. Does it give us any information on it? Oh, uh, no. That's not. I think I need to do shift I. Centuries old, this gate wreckage is a somber memorial to the first terraformer war. It reminds the Terrans of the Xenon roots 
in Terran technology, the Xenon threat to the survival of Earth, and the sacrifices the Terrans had to make. Had it not been for the heroic actions of the Dragonfly drawing the terraformers through this gate, before its destruction, Earth and all humans and soul would have succumbed to the machines. The resulting 500 years of isolation, knowing what lies beyond and yet confined to the small corner of the galaxy, were considered a small price to pay for the survival of Earth. Very interesting. Okay. You know, I, I started in the early game doing a bunch of data vaults for timeline stuff uh, for the purpose of filling out the timeline. I do intend at some point to continue that. Um, but there's not there's not a whole lot of reason to do it anymore as far as money goes because um, we are in pretty good shape. In fact, we didn't even really look at that. We're currently at 145 million in the wallet. And the station has... I must have pulled some money out of the station right before I saved the game last. So we're at 146.7 in the wallet. And our net worth is 453.9 million. So we are doing pretty good for where we currently are in the game. Okay. Um, let's do another long range. Oops. Hit the wrong button there. I'm going to have to remap that button. Okay, there's a wharf and an equipment dock. Uh, equipment docks are on the list, too. Okay, so I think we need to go... I'm just going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to head kind of in uh, a north and then a west. Oh, I guess I can't. Can I not do waypoints? I can with my other ships if I hold shift down. Hmm. All right, well, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm just going to go north, then I'm going to go west, then I'm going to go south um, until I find the gate. So I will bring you guys back. Uh, when we get ready to go through that gate. Entering Venus. Venus, okay. There's Venus. Let's do a long range. Terran construction vessel. That's an unknown object, so it's either probably a satellite or a gate. Let's go that direction. I think it's a gate. I'm not really too concerned about uncovering everything in these sectors because I'm going to send my scouts over here to take care of that. Just got to find the gates mostly. Terran security to approaching vessel. You are approaching a restricted ah, area. Okay. Please divert your course immediately. Diverting. Don't shoot me. All right. So that's the gate that leads to Earth then. Uh, Earth and the moon. Interesting. Okay. So that means we have to find the gate that goes to Mercury. So let's kind of head west, I guess. That's probably where we want to go there. Ah! Entering Mercury. Mercury, and there's the sun. Okay. Um, my guess is that this is probably a, a dead end system. But I don't know that for sure. There could be smaller sections of it too. Let's do another scan here. Quest here. What a, what is that quest? Is something quick and easy? It's a medium quest. We must carry food supplies in the sector are sufficient enough. 
in case that were blockaded help stock the stations with food. Deliver foodstuffs to our stations in Mercury. Eh, nah, I don't think I want to do that right now. I got too many other things to do. Okay, so um, I'm going to fly north. I'm not expecting to find another gate, but I don't know that for sure. Um, but actually, before we do that, let's go ahead and grab our scouts. What are they doing? They're currently... Yeah, I have them staged in Asteroid Belt. That's right, I remember that. Um, so that they would be ready to go. Um, so let's send Scout 1 to Mercury. And explore. We'll send Scout 2 to Venus for explore. And 3 can explore Mars. Okay, so we'll let them take care of uncovering the rest of these systems. Um, but I am going to, like I said, I'm just going to shoot north a little bit just to see if there's possibly another gate. That's funny, you, you know, when you go directly towards a planet like this, it makes you feel like you're slowly turning towards the right, but it's just the planet rotating. What's this? This is an easy destroy mines. We can do this one. All right. If you think you can handle it. I think I can handle it. Okay, let's see if we can uh, rescue this guy and get a little more rep with the Terrans. Come at me, bruh. Friend, phone mine. Friend. Thanks. Follow mineral. Okay, we got that mission done. Got uh, got one rep actually with a Terrans. Nice. Okay, so let's see here. Um, we got our scouts coming over to explore these territories. Right now, I have. My Terran Trader, which is this dude. Where is he based at? Neptune. Okay, so that means he can go one, two, three. We might need to get another trader over here so one can kind of focus on these lower sections and then one can focus on these upper sections I think we probably want to think about doing that um, do I have any more pilots that are ready to go three star let's go take a look at this captain mm. this one is is getting close but he's not he's not quite there yet He's one of the fighters with the rattlesnake. That's our captain of uh, the nemesis. Okay, so... Then, that being the case... We've got a trader in split space. You know, in terms of reputation... We don't need rep with split or Talati. I don't want to pull a trader out of Talati because Talati makes us a lot of money. So we could pull this split trader out and bring him down to Terran space. We're still trying to get rep with Boron. Uh, Parented space is also pretty lucrative for us, so I don't think I want to pull that one off either. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to pull our split space pilot, a uh, trader. Um, let's remove all orders and assignments. 
and we're gonna have you come down and trade in uh, we'll put you an asteroid belt so you can go one two three this way and one two three this way and they won't go to getsu funi because i have blacklisted that system i'm pretty sure i have let's take a look at that blacklist yeah getsu funi so they won't come that direction uh, or go into that system okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to i think i'm going to go grab my nemesis and the squadron accompanying squadron and go back up to sanctuary of darkness and continue that quest line uh, but i'm going to get this guy set up first and so i will meet you guys up in sanctuary sanctuary of darkness and we will start the high road quest line so i'll see you in a bit all right guys um i just realized that at some point fairly recently we have hit uh plus 10 with alliance uh, which is great because that means that i can now buy ships at their station and equip the guns instead of you know having the ships go somewhere else to get the guns because i be, you know, until we got plus 10, we weren't, didn't have access to, uh, you know, their military grade weapons. So we are stopping off here at this station so that we can docking granted, uh, do our promotion ceremony and get access to that information, uh, or that privilege, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Uh, we have, uh, I also have the nemesis done. on its way. Um, up to, to welcome you aboard. Boron Space. Pegasus, Vanguard. So I will rendezvous with it after I get the promotion here. And then we'll start that quest line. You are among the few who appear to have the clarity to see our goals as something worth pursuing. I once again thank you for your efforts. We look forward to working with you more in the future. Safe journey. Okay, cool. Um, so that means we can now... Uh, this is Alliance Shipyard. What kind of Alliance ship can we get? Heracles Vanguard Builder. So that's just, that's, that's just a Paranet Builder. Uh, I wonder what the difference is between this and the normal Heracles Vanguard. Just out of curiosity, I do need to get a builder at some point. High preset on that is 21 million. Okay. It's got eight turrets. It's quite a quite a nice little collection of turrets for a, a builder ship. Wouldn't have to really worry about fighters. Okay. Um, let's go to their wharf, which is uh, oh, we just opened up Sacred Relic. Look at that, I because I just followed the guide to get there. How about that? Uh, that reminds me, too. I want to, I want to uh, pretty much, I mean, we're at the point now where I, I, I kind of want to finish opening up all the, all of the sectors. Um, so I will, I, I don't know if I, I'm going to do that on camera or off camera or maybe a little of both. It's um, uh, but it's on it's it's on the on the to do list and pretty high up on the to do list because I know there's more sectors you know that we have that I haven't unlocked yet, um, and I want to get that done so we can pretty much get the whole entire map open, and that will then you know open up more opportunities for us to go places to buy sh new ships and more trading opportunities etc cetera, etc. Cetera. Anyway, um, if we go to here now to the allied wharf and we go to small what what are your medium options all right all the trader ships okay or transporter ships i've been uh i, I really like the nodans and the sentinels in particular and now we can actually do the og2 sentinel because that one comes with 
the bolt repeaters and we can buy them straight up here and we don't have to you know send them somewhere else like I was saying and I do need to buy a few more fighters also so it looks to me like um, you know these are these are kind of our our cheap workhorse fighters and I haven't really found another fighter that I like better for this role than the Nodan because it's relatively cheap, it's fast, uh, it's got a lot of cargo container space for a fighter, like a huge mat. Not that that really matters a whole lot, but um, and I just you know I just really like these fighters. I like the way they look too. They're they're pretty cool looking. So let's see. I give that an all around. I think I did that just to keep the price down on them. Uh, even with its current you know, uh, fittings is still over a million. Yeah, I, I mean, actually though, I kind of would like to have a combat engine on it though. If we put the Mark three, that's just going to bring the price up a half million more. So the Mark two might be a good compromise. Yeah, let's go with the Mark II. Uh, we got the Mark II thrusters. We've got... I want Talati shields on them. I thought I had already set that up. Apparently, I didn't set this up all the way. Uh, we got Mark II bolt repeaters in both gun slots. Software should be El Cheapo software because I'm not flying these ships myself. I do want to put it, give them some flares. And I do want to give them uh, a full service crew, even though it says there's probably not enough people to do that. I'm just trying to decide if I want to put, maybe put a couple satellites in here, just so, you know, if we needed them for something, maybe a few nav beacons and maybe some laser towers. These, these are cheap laser towers, so let's give them, like, 20. And, uh, okay, so, yeah, let's go with that. All right, so that, uh, actually, that, how did that reduce the price? Yeah, so we got Talati shields, we got the bolt repeaters. We didn't do anything with the software. We added stuff here. So, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, but anyway, uh, oh, maybe something changed with the market. Just in that time that we were looking at that. That's probably what, what it is. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to overwrite this loadout, and this is now going to be our standard fighter for now. Okay, let's add... I need, I've need. i lost a few fighters here and there, and I haven't really replenished them. Um, so what I think we'll do is let's go ahead and buy five of these. Confirm order. And hopefully, where are we going? Hopefully this has everything we need to to get them. Yeah, it's not saying that we're missing parts. Yeah, looks like they're all being built. Fantastic. Okay, that's going to be nice uh, to be able to build them right there and not have to, you know, send them somewhere else for their weapons. Okay, so let's see. The Nemesis is on its way. Um, over to Boron Space, and it's, I'm just going to stage it in Great Reef until I can get over there uh, to start our quest. And I think, I think that's really all I need to do right now, so I, I just need to rendezvous with the Nemesis. Okay, guys, uh, we are back, and we're ready to go into Sanctuary of Darkness and get this quest started. Entering system, Sanctuary of Darkness. So let's um, let's go to here, and we'll go to our quests. The high road, except, and uh, approach the highway construction site. Oh wow, they're gonna give us seven hundred fifty thousand for this. Nice, that's pretty good money. Okay, so let's get on over there. We're going to follow our our beacon path that we set down. We can see those uh, by the flashing lights. 
And so, yeah, let's go over there and see see what's going to happen. We're probably just going to fight off a bunch of cock, I'm assuming, at least to start this with. Okay, we're at the place here. Oh, we get a cutscene. Nice. All my fighters um, should be on intercept, which is fine for this fight, and my turrets are, are on attack all enemies. Let's just go after these dudes. That's it? Danger. Okay. That was pretty easy. <laughs> Not that I was expecting to be difficult. <laughs> Refreshments. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'll take a beer. I'll take a beer after that very, very difficult and challenging fight. <laughs> Docking granted. It is you. How favorable and fortuitous that our paths should cross again. Yep, it's me. Please do approach me on the bridge. I insist. Okay, I'm coming. Come in, come in. I guess he's happy to see us. I hope your journey to our ancient homeland was sprinkled with success. As you may have keenly registered, my position has somewhat evolved since we last had the pleasure of meeting. While I await the summons of Her Majesty's Royal Council for redevelopment of the former provinces adrift, I have pledged myself to this intrepid defense mission. Okay, um, what are we defending? Nothing less than the construction of an advanced, state-of-the-art cross-sector highway. Fantastic. Preparations began as soon as the connection to Kingdom End was established, and most of the resource shipments have already arrived. Once our mission is complete, Boron ships will once again traverse safely between all known sectors of the Queendom without disturbing the local inhabitants. If only these inhabitants had received as thorough a briefing by the Queen herself as I have on this matter. <laughs> I don't think they would have listened. The cock don't agree? Indeed. As you had the pleasure of witnessing mere moments ago, the Ka'ak refused to acknowledge the merits of this undertaking. Precisely as I warned when this gruesome and dreary sector's rehabilitation was first presented to me. We intrude upon their dark sanctuary, and naturally, they seek to divest themselves of our presence. Um, so what are you planning? He already told me, but... Thanks to their unique warp technology, Ka'ak ship clusters continue to harry our construction ships. Even if these do little damage to our operation, they keep us perpetually on edge, unable to discern our opponent's grand strategy. Consequently, there can only be one response, even if it pains me to go against my deepest boron instincts. We shall sally forth. By taking a forward position, we may gain valuable intelligence and divert Ka'ak attention away from our construction site. Um, okay. 
What can I do to help? Tragically, we have Hello. recently recorded Hello. unacceptable losses, hence the invitation to any spirited pilots in the general vicinity. Of course, you far exceed the required qualification. Well, thank Yet, you very much. Nevertheless, I would be honored and grateful to take you temporarily into the employ of Her Majesty's Expeditionary Flotilla. You may choose between one of our two most renowned flight leaders and fly a well-equipped military ship for the duration of this mission. Unless you prefer to risk your own ship, of course. That depends upon what you're going to give Once me. Once you are settled, we shall embark like a school of Nishalon mud wranglers on the first day of swelter season. Nishalon mud wranglers. Uh, wranglers. Yeah, okay. Um, who are the flight leaders? They are Tinfiga and Hukabo. At first, I had reason to question their compatibility, but this recent engagement has rapidly evaporated such worries. Royal Warden Hukabo leads Lilac Finn, a flight of corvettes sent to our aid from Kingdom End itself. I do not know him well, but it is apparent that he brings a thrilling ferocity rarely seen among our kind. Okay. Tin Figa, on the other appendage, has defended the provinces adrift for longer than I served as royal steward. Despite her mannerisms, she leads our gunboats with a cool stoicism. I can also personally attest to her unswerving loyalty and commitment to our people. Um, okay. As you command. Splendid. I expected no less. Since it appears that we will not have the pleasure of further reinforcements at this time, I shall commence preparations for our embarkation post-haste. We shall speak again once you have conferred with Tinfiga and Hukabo. Join Hukabo or Tinfiga. Okay. Um, so I guess we go talk to him and then decide which one we're going to join, which for me is entirely going to depend upon what ship they give us and do we actually are they gonna actually give the ship to us like to keep that would be cool still think that these suits are not perambulatory enough by the queen it would require the presence of a law to converse with you in this emotional state really then why do you not go and fetch one ha <laughs> you know full well that the only law on this ship is currently preoccupied ensuring the triumph of this mission. Comrade, it appears that we have a visitor. Just as you were calming my emotional state. Okay. Um Tinfiga. What are they doing? <laughs> have you tried <laughs> issuing a formal invitation with the official seal of Her Majesty? <laughs> Pilot, you may approach. Okay, let's talk to Hukabo first. Yes. What is it you require? Um, reporting for duty? Evidently, it was wise to rely on Leda We to send me a suitably pugnacious replacement. You see, one of my most experienced pilots was struck down with space sickness and is confined for the time being to an aqua chamber. Consequently, there remains a fully operational corvette anchored within the hold of the Minelaus Reminiscence. If you promise to treat this honorable ship with the respect she is due, she shall be yours until we have concluded our mission. Until we have concluded our mission. Uh... Uh, was was there a disagreement? Nonsense. Nothing of the sort. I am merely unaccustomed to the lack of pheromonic communication, and these incapacious suits make nothing easier. My comrade in arms, who is yet to experience the splendor of Nishala's oceans, exploits her advantage brazenly and mischievously. It is evident that, for the duration of our joint undertaking, it falls to me to teach this backwater boron the manners pertinent to her position. Sounds like there was an argument. Or, or a disagreement. Um, how do you operate? We are Her Majesty's Lilac Finn. 
armed to the trunk, the froth of the froth. Though traditional boron conduct stipulates prudence and caution, our corvettes proceed boldly to quash any perils before they grow rampant. And as you have no doubt observed, a good smack on the appendage makes these Kahak retreat like any other foe. Okay, uh, let's go talk to the other one. Very well, but do not keep me waiting. This guy's sort of kind of a jerk. <laughs> Whoop. Personal space. Sorry. Mm hmm. Would you look at that? Fresh meat for the fleet. As luck would have it, one of my pilots has requested a discharge to join his relatives in Atreus Clouds. If you are willing to take his place, there is a well equipped and only slightly battered gunboat waiting for you in the carrier's internal storage. Does this room look Argon? What? What? What's that mean? A keen observation. The Queendom of Boron and the Argon Federation worked closely together in preparation for the dark. Turrets, military doctrine, efficient subdivision of aerated interiors, uncomfortable chairs. If you pay attention, you can see their influence everywhere. Okay. Um, you don't talk like a boron. I, she doesn't? How do, how do I know that? Oh my. I am, of course, fully and entirely capable of employing the verbose and ostentatious mannerisms of my people. Unless I want to tease the adorable stickler over there. <laughs> or she likes him. talk to my flight. Really, no time for flowery antics during a battle. So best get used to it. That was a funny thing. Okay, how do you operate? Gunboats are built to provide fire support. So that is exactly what we do. Corvettes and heavy fighters may bring the battle to a close, but our turrets dictate its flow. Interesting. How does that sound? Want to join? You know, I haven't really done gunboats yet here in the next floor, uh, and of course we have been doing corvettes. So, I think, uh, I think we will do the gunboat thing. Let's do it. Here we go. I'll join you. Terrific. Welcome to the team. Retrieve your ship from internal storage. All right, guys. Well, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap up the episode here. Tufiga has just confirmed the transferal of your, uh, bucket. Uh. To retrieve your ship, I suggest you peruse one of the ship consoles next to our M-Class docking pads. Though I would never prevent you from reverting to your own vessel instead, should you so desire. Okay. Um, so yeah, we're going to wrap up the episode here and we'll pick it up right where we left off in the next episode. So yeah, thanks everybody for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment and share out the video. We'll catch you all in the very next episode. Bye-bye.